Hey everybody. <laughs> now let's see if the sound is okay. <laughs> everybody, please, um, can you hear me? <laughs> Hopefully, not sure what's going on here with this um, with this new setup I've um, got going here. Each week has been something. So um, <laughs> when I finally get my um, normal studio, it'll be hopefully up and running. Anyways, um, thanks for coming by. Hopefully uh, if you guys can find your way from the other other site to this site. But um, sound looks fine. All right, thanks a lot. So here we go. <laughs> I am up in Minnesota today. I'm up in Duluth. Um, my dentist is up here. Long story, but I have a dentist up in Duluth. And I got a crown here, I see it now. <laughs> um, so anyways, um, we're gonna be doing a night scene tonight and it's um, it's gonna be a Paris night scene and we're gonna do it a little bit differently from our normal um, kind of watercolors. And I'll, I'll tell you, explain it in a little second. What I wanna do is um, show you the value study or value of black and white of it. So this black and white is um, gonna be the value. So this is what you have to look for in any painting that you're doing look for the black and white um, see what the values are and i'm not going to use any any um, masking fluid on this one uh, but i'm going to um, use white paint and i will try to paint around certain things if you want to use the um if you want to use white paint that's fine so let me just um hold on if you want to use white paint or if you want to use masking fluid you can do like areas like this these little dots these little lights and stuff in here you can do those you can even do the eiffel tower with soft tape i remember i talked to you about that holbein soft tape um and actually here's some of the supplies i'm using just again for those new people and um so there's there's the supplies i don't have the soft tape on there um i just started using it um and i actually use it for masking places off too so those are the supplies for anybody who's new and you want to see what i'm using the colors i'm using the brushes i'm using my brushes are for sale. They're on my website, which is right here, my website, beckerart.net. Go down here and there's a painting of the day. There is a, um, there's what we're painting today. And so again, anybody who comes here and wants to know, and normally this link works, but for some reason, these links have not been working. So I've got to figure out why, why it's not working, but hopefully by next week, I'll have it all. I'll be back in my home studio, which I'm designing. I'm out, I'm out of my regular studio up in McHenry, but I will, I'll be in my home studio then and I'm going to set it up so everything will hopefully be working fine and here's where you get my newsletter on my website all right so let's get to, let's get down to business here all right so here's the here's the scene it's a Paris scene and so it's a night scene and it looks very complicated but I've noticed recently with um, a bunch of the painters like the Alvaro Castanets and the um, the artist was Zubevic or Zubic or I forget what his name is but anyways um, they're using a lot of um, grays and they simplify things to such extremes. I, I should have put a couple of pictures on there to show you how they simplify. So all this area and then all this area in here, like you, this, there's a bunch of drawing. And if you want to see the drawing a little closer up, see how I, I have quite a bit of drawing in there. And I hand drew this here up in Minnesota. And um, so I hand drew it. If you can't hand draw it and if you have to use an enlarger, that's fine. Use an enlarger. Or um, go to like a Home Depot, Home Depot, <laughs> uh, um, a, a Office Max and stuff where they print up black and whites, and you can use that tracing um, material on, ta on the back, and you just put it on there. But get your drawing to look nice. And so with a night scene, what you're going to do is you're going to come in here, and we're going to start with the lights. And I know I have a messy palette here, but let me just clean it off a little bit here. You can tell this is not my studio. <laughs> I would have had to clean already, but and no. Um, no Gary tonight because I'm up in Minnesota. Gary is always the one that helps me in my other studio. Also, we got to give it a toast tonight. Tonight's um, craft beer is a UFO white. It's um, lemon, orange, orange peel, and coriander. So it comes from, I think it comes from New Hampshire. So that's where our craft beer is coming from. So cheers, everybody. <laughs> ah, I needed it today. So what we have here, let me see who's all here. I want to welcome you guys, Jill, Maura, Sonia, Ginny, Maura again, <laughs> Jill, uh, Tina, Joni. Hey everybody, Everett, thanks for coming. Pam, thanks for um, texting me, Pam. <laughs> uh, so here we go. So um, we're gonna start with the lights and you make up your color schemes. Um, if you're using a 
big blue sky, you can maybe use a lot of orange in your light scene. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a big dark blue sky back there. But you're going to do your lights first. So you're going to make some orange, like my Eiffel Tower will be orange. And I'm kind of going to go around, or not too detailed to the edge, because I'm going to be doing it darker later. Oh, I forgot I don't have a hair dryer here. <laughs> so I will just have to make, to make do. And then um, if you want to keep some of the way of the paper, like where the light is, see here there's a little bit of light. And so I'm just going to put a little bit, showing me where it's going to be at. Like I'm going to put a little bit of light there of the orange. Orange and a little bit of pink. I use this, um, this pink right here. What is it called? Um, pink. <laughs> so just get your pink color there. And so we're going to go down here. And um, I'm just going to find all the light spots and just do my coloring. A little bit of pink. And there's that bright red up there. And um, if you want to make it bright red, you can do that. Or I'm going to keep in the orange tones. And so I'm going to make it more of an orangey, orangey pink, you know, in the signs. I know you can make it any color you want. We're doing the lights. We're doing the light scenes, light parts. There's a sign that's going to be dark over this. You notice how I'm not doing like a big sky or anything. It's it, there's pieces because it's that's what my that's what my lights are. They're a bunch of little pieces. So I'm just gonna be putting in little pieces that are my lights, the light colors. And if I go in my sky, it's gonna be dark later. So I don't have to worry if I go like that or make a mess in there. Don't worry about that part. I'm just gonna go in here and mess around. Put a little pink. Cannot believe it didn't start again today. Sorry, people. <laughs> Sorry, it didn't start. I gotta figure that out. I'm not sure if anybody um, entered AWS that was on. I think you can still enter until this Friday. So if you want to enter AWS, that's still available. It was gonna be the 15th that was the last date, but they're extending it until the ninth, until this Friday tomorrow. So if you want to enter AWS, you still got a chance to do so. And so I'm getting all my lights again. Just going in here, getting those lights. And, and um, anything that's dark, all the silhouette stuff is just gonna be on top of it. So just have fun with the colors. And I'm gonna do a little bit of, um, there's a sign, red sign back here. These are our lights. And they're not very large, like there's not a big area, like except for the Eiffel Tower is a big area. But so you don't have as much chance to do like a big, big, big wash. You're just doing little washes. And that was the tower part there. It looked like there was a little bit of blue in that. So maybe I'll just do that. And I can go beyond it because that's all going to be dark. So remember that. Always remember if you're going to go into an area, you can go into the dark area too. This weekend I'm doing a um, virtual class for somebody. You guys are not invited because they had to pay for it. But... I'm doing it up in Hibbing, Hibbing, Minnesota. And um, we said, decided that I'm going to be doing it here in this, my, my studio here in, in Duluth. And um, they're just going to be, so we're going to try my, I'm going to try my first day, three hour class. And so if it works so well, we'll uh, look for that. I'll be doing some more Zoom, Zoom classes. So then my first one, my first Zoom class. So we'll see how it goes. And then if that goes well, we'll do a Zoom class. And be more personal and um we'll do some smaller classes like maybe 10 10 people only and maybe we'll do it like a two-day class or something like that we're we're looking into that i'm looking into it now just to see how that goes now that my studio is closed and um, um i have a little bit more time to do that too <laughs> they will cost though they will cost some money um, because it'd be like a workshop and I'll still do I still do my Thursdays. That's still going to happen. It's just not in my studio. I had to close my studio up. All right. So I think that's pretty much my lights area. I'm going to go a little bit more. See this big sign right here. This there's a sign right here that's really right in red. Also remember, ask the question here and there. I'll, I'll keep on looking. Shell pink. Oh, thanks, Jill. It is shell pink. <laughs> shell pink and the other pink is, um, there's shell pink. And what other pink I have on my list? So let me go look at that. <laughs> Forgetting the colors. Holy smokes, I don't remember what the name of that one is. 
Thanks, Jill. Thanks for telling me Michelle Pink. So here we're gonna go with a nice red sign. Well, orange, more orange. You can go super bright with Scarlet Lake if you want. That's always a really bright red. If you put it on one side, make sure you put it on this other side too. Make it somewhere else. Give it another somewhere else. So those are my lights, um, pretty much. And um, so let's go into our darks right now. No time to lose, you know, just um, no time to waste. Just get in there and get your lights, get the colors that you want. And if it was one of those Elvero Castanet type of painters, that those European painters, they would just do this whole building, one wash, and it would just be one color. I'm gonna give it a little bit more than that, but um, not much. I wanna keep things together this time in this picture. Uh, you don't have to, you have to draw everything in, and that's the complicated part, but it's not complicated if you sketch it or trace it. Um, so definitely get as much in there as you can in a drawing, but when you go to paint it, we're gonna do big areas, big, huge areas of the light and dark. Let me move over my screen here a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Now I'll take a little bit of violet lavender, that in there for like, now I'm getting my middle tones. I'm gonna get it, go in there and get my middle tones of the buildings that are not quite black, like the sky. So I'm building on my darks, it's my half inch brush. Again, if you need questions answered, please ask them. I'll look at the screen once in a while. With the night scene, they're kind of fun because everything comes together at the very end because Right now, I'm just doing a bunch of stuff that's going to be underneath the black or the dark, dark colors. This is a middle tone. I used a lot of lavender to get my grays. Lavender with grays just works out so easily. If you need a color like that, take orange and put lavender in it, instantly gets gray. You know, it's that orangey gray, but um, it's a nice, nice way of getting grays, just the lavender. You can also do it with black. You can get a gray with black and um, kind of the same type of thing, but I kind of like the lavender, it just adds that purple in it. You know, me and purple. So now the under eaves are gonna be light, so I like to put a little bright color in there. So a little bit of shell pink, brilliant pink. That's what the name is, brilliant pink. The other pink is brilliant pink. And so I'll put that in there to underneath the eaves because the light is shining from, a, from below. I mean, our light source is the lights that are in the city. So um, you know exactly where they're coming from. So you can kind of figure that the lights are in the bottom and they're shooting upwards. So the eaves are gonna be light. And so when we do this building later, when it's dry, it'll be a nice dark building, but the eaves will be light. So middle tones are going in. A little bit of blue to my orange because my sky is gonna be blue. So you gotta get a little bit of blue, blue inside some of these darker colors that are middle tones. And you can see, I'm not really look, painting pieces as per se, like here's a sign, there's a sign, there's a sign. That's gonna be later. That's for the, that's for the, um, that's for the darks to work out. This is just to kind of give me nice colors here and there and values that I want. I'm looking for a right value. Of course, I do have to make certain like that line there has to be the side of the building because it is the side of the building. So things like that. And also watch your light. And if you do put mascoid down, that is a little bit easier when it comes to like leaving white for the actual light, but I'm going to use white paint later on. So I'm going to show you how to use white paint. I'm not against white paint, so why not use the white paint instead of masking fluid? I know there's some that are against um, the, the white paint, so then just use masking fluid. Uh, these people here are going to be darker later, but I need to have a little bit dark lighter behind them. And then you figure the signs and stuff here, and there's an awning. It comes over this way. Then these buildings are a little bit darker. See how and it gets really dark, these buildings? So, but I'm not gonna make them super dark and I'm gonna make them a little grayer as they go back because, and the sky's gonna be blue back there. So you might as well get some of that back there already with this, these buildings right here. If you look really close, there are buildings that go all the way back. And you see how I'm not, I'm just doing big blobs. You know, it's just a blob building. Um, I always use my black and white photo. Um, ever just asked if I use my black and white? I use it as my value study. It's like, that's what I use as my value study, my black and white um, photo. And so, yes, I do use that. Because um, it shows me the values. It shows me the values that I gotta use. Uh, but I've gotten to a point where I don't even need that photo anymore. What I do is I squint my eyes on the colored version and it breaks it down the same way. Breaks it down to the values. 
So just squint your eyes and um, and look for the big areas of light and dark. Because if you can't see it when you squint your eye, you shouldn't be painting it. <laughs> it's, it's it's that simple. If I'm squinting my eye and I can't see what it is, then you're not going to have to worry about painting that piece that way. I look at the big parts and you squint your eye. And you look for the big parts of of the um, what your eye sees when you're squinting. The big values, the light values you'll see, and the dark values stay dark. And so it kind of combines your, makes it kind of like a black and white. I'm putting these little darks here. Again, this is my metal tone. This is not the dark darks yet. This is still like halfway in between the lights and the darks. So the street is, you know, some of these buildings in the side, they're half, half values. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going for the half values, not the dark darks yet. Though these are considered the darks because I'm going into the dark pattern and I'm kind of cutting around the lights. But this is night and so they're, they're, they're more direct light. Not everything is shined on with the lights. So you're going to get a lot of middle tone. And middle tone can go towards either light or dark too. That's another thing you got to remember. My middle tones, when I say middle tones, it can either go to the dark or to the light. It doesn't matter. It just follow your value study, follow the big lights and darks. And then, you know, if there's got middle tones in there, don't worry about that. It doesn't matter. It will be just, it'll look fine. As long as you get your big, big darks working. Cheers. You gotta get it in our sip. <laughs> oh, this is a good beer. UFO white. It's a very good craft beer, but I think you only get it in um, New Hampshire. So. Drive out to New Hampshire and get yourself some UFO or your local craft beer store. Also, the my Thursday classes have been closed this month of November because of the COVID. Um, the Civic Center closed up, so no classes this month, and I'm gone anyways. And next week is next Thursday, uh, by the way, is Thanksgiving, so will there will be no. Um, no uh, demonstration. I may do one on uh, Wednesday though. So look for it on Wednesday. If I'm very, if I'm feeling really good and if I have everything set up and so it works. <laughs> but hopefully look for, look for next Thursday, Thanksgiving day. Um, look for my, my video paint along on Wednesday. All right, so let's get this side now, because this is um, this side is a little bit darker than I had. That's the light area. So now I'm gonna go in and get the windows and such that are away from the light. So going right over it, it's gonna give me a soft edge. Leaving the under parts, the windows are what's gonna be a little bit darker. And as you notice, what I'm using is this lavender, some purple, and the purple was from last week's actually, from last week's um, demo that we did. I haven't cleaned my palette since then. So, and I haven't painted since then because I've been traveling. I'm here and again, I'm up in Minnesota and it's been snowing. It was snowed here, so I went skiing this morning. Everett asked where the focal point is. The focal point is in the center here, this area right here. This um, area, and it kind of includes the uh, Eiffel Tower back there too. It's just an area. It doesn't have to be a thing. It can be an area. So it's the whole area right here from this to this to the Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower is kind of a secondary interest on top, but it, it combines down here with the light parts of that too. So you can have a center of interest, but the, uh, it's not a thing, it's an, it's an area. I always like to call it area of interest instead of center of interest because it is more of an area that you see. A lot of times it's an object too. I mean, yes, it does become an object at times, but um, I always feel as a student, though, if I say center of interest, you're thinking an object. And um, I like to say area, that way you know it's not just an object, but it could be a whole area that you're doing. The cars are all going to be done as one. So I'm going to go with a middle tone value and just kind of go through all of them. And, um, and then later on, I'll, when I hit the darks, that's what's going to divide each one of them. Right now, I'm just gonna, and if you wanna like float some pigment in front that make it a purple car or a gray car, go back here, there's an orange one. You, know, you can do that, but it's not, you're not identifying that they're cars yet one by one. You're doing the whole slew of them. 
And then here and there, you kind of leave a window open, a sign light. And again, um, if you were doing the lights with masking fluid, you'd have them, you know, I'm kind of going around this one here, and this sign is gonna be put dark around it. And thanks for everybody to, um, who's posting your paintings on Facebook. Uh, you guys did some great jobs. I just saw Ann Menges. I think she had, um, they did the truck last week and she did a great job in the truck. You all did a great job in the truck. Thanks again for posting them online. That was a fun one. I enjoyed that one. All right, I think we're ready. That's all my mediums, all my mediums and, um, and lights. And um, actually, while this is drying, because I have to wait for some of this to dry, I'm going to go in here and do my Eiffel Tower now because I'm going to go around it. And I'm just going to do like, um, it's already the color. Now I'm going to do this little X's and stuff. I'm not going to make it so detailed that, you know, you can see every single thing that's happening there. You know, it's a grid iron, you know, and so you just know it's iron with different Thing. And so it's far in the distance and you can't quite tell what's happening on back there either. So you just kind of um, fake it. You put, I, I kind of make X's with my brush, see? It gives it enough of a look like, yeah, that's... Um, if you're doing a really tight painting of it, then yes, you'd have to draw each and every one of the things in there. And about when you go to paint it, you just kind of, you know, follow that a little bit more closer. But again, I'm not that way, so I don't do that. I kind of make it more just the background looser. And as you get to this focal point or area of interest um, that's uh, more going to be here, then I can put in nice colors and, and get a little bit tighter with that area. All right, let's go for darks. Let's start with the big sky. That way, give me, I can regulate my sky right from the get-go. And even if I did do that thing, that's okay because it's, it's okay. We're going to do it nice and dark. And I start with black. I just go in with black. You know, a lot of people are against black too. In schools and stuff but I like it and what I do is I add color to the black and I'm going to start in here and I'm going to wet up here to start it because this is darker up on top because it's farther away and so as you see in the picture it's dark up here and as you go down it's going to get lighter and get to a blue blue and so I'm just going to come in here and now you have negative paint because I didn't mask it out Eiffel Tower if you want to mask it out you can but I've got to go around it and if you're a loose painter a loose style you don't have to be that tight on it, but if you're a tight painter, then go a little bit slower and tighter. I don't know, like here, I'm gonna go and get the get the little point on the top of the tower. As we go down, we just kind of pull this over this way a little bit. I can stop right there because that's really, really dark right there. And I don't want to go back and forth. I want to finish this side and then that side, because if you start doing that, you're going to you have to work too fast. And so I'm just going to get this side and you can see that's wet still. So I can use my uh, paint a little bit thicker. So if you use your paint thicker, it'll stop the bleeding. So we'll go down here. It's now it's really wet though. And you can put other colors besides just that blue. So maybe put a little purple in there for a little purple. How about a little bit of red? Why not? It's just gonna make it nice and dark. Make it strong. It's gotta be dark. It's nighttime. There's no light. It's up there. So you start with black. Get yourself some black. Nobody's gonna arrest you. It's, uh, it's legal to use. Andrew Wyeth used it. And if Andrew Wyeth can use it, I, we can use it. Now, as I come down, I'm gonna start going over here with some peacock blue, some Prussian blue. And I'm gonna get it so we can actually see the color. Up there, you don't see much color because I want it to look dark. Why did I just do that? That's going to be a hard edge. <laughs> just keep on with one side. I have to stand up here. So I have to... Actually, I'm going to change. I'm going to rotate my painting because I can. It's easier to go across like this. Like, see, it's always like you're writing. So I'm just going to go like this and make a nice, even line. Then put water here. And see how it gets lighter down here? I'm just adding a little bit more water. Still go around these buildings. Make it a nice, nice blue down there. And then um, 
That's why we put um, paper on boards and tape it down to a board. Don't uh, tape it to your table because you can't rotate it and stuff at times. That's why I, I put it on a board so I can rotate and it's easier like you're writing than it is to um, go down with your sometimes and get a straight line like that. So then I look over here and back there is really dark. Parts of the um, Eiffel Tower later will be darker. Now this time I'm going to do the same thing. But I'm going to start on the bottom with this blue I already have here, this lighter blue. And just kind of cut in, get the edge. And I know there's just a couple of lamps there or something on the edge. And this is going to be a little bit darker too, it looks like. I kind of can't see what that is. If that's, is that a building right there? It looks like a building cuts over. Oh, that's part of the Eiffel Tower part that's there. So we'll do that. So again, here's the blue. Little indigo blue or um, Prussian blue. I'm gonna go around this light. There's a little light right there. I'm gonna go around that. Get my Eiffel Tower really nice. Get a nice hard edge line there. Again, it all depends on if your style is really, really loose. You can go really quick with that, you know, and not make it so tight. And just make it a really um, like abstractish look to the background. That's fine too. Go around this sign here a little bit. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of water in here and pick up a lot of my black again, because now I gotta get it really dark. So purple, black, Prussian blue, permanent violet is the purple I use, permanent violet. And I mix, mix some water, because you know me, float your pigment, float that pigment inside that water. Any more questions? Let me know. I'll answer them. I'm sure everybody wants to know something, and it's not gonna be a bad question. Don't be scared, just say them out loud. I screwed this up already without starting in time. Now, up here it seems almost too blue. I want to make it even darker. So I'm going to add a little bit of black to there. So it's really dark up there. I don't want even any color back there. But I'm making sure it floats. You have to float the pigment when it's thick. You can't have it thick and not float it because then it looks too um, like, like an oil because it's too thick. And so you don't want it, you want it to float, so make it look like a watercolor. That's what, how you do watercolor, you float things. Now I'm gonna go in here and just cut out some buildings. And just come down the side and get some, there's a little red in there. I'm not sure what's up there. And if you can't see what's in the picture, don't worry about it. Just then, this is, it doesn't matter what you do in the picture, right? <laughs> because if you can't see what's up there, you don't have to make it look like something then at your picture either. Just do the same type of thing. Here, there's a little red up there. That's all you need. Let me go over here. What's this? This is a little bit darker now. Kind of comes down and looks like there's a sign here. And it doesn't have to be exactly like you see in the photo, you know, just make it close. That's good. That's good enough. A little window there or something. So my Eiffel Tower looks way too light. We'll see. We can go back over that later. With a nice scene, be wary that everything dries 20% um, lighter. So it may look dark. I mean, look how dark I made that sky and still, and it looks kind of light, right? So really push your pigment when you're doing a night scene. None of my students usually add enough um, pigment when you're doing a night scene. When you got to get that dark, you've got to use a lot of pigment. And don't be afraid of using black within that color pigment. Because everything, everything just pops then. It pops really nicely. And it, it makes your lights really bright. And if you just make a middle tone on everything, then nothing is, you know, really bright. Because it's just middle tone. You need to really push that dark. Push it, push it, push it. And it's going to dry 20% lighter if you don't use a really dark amount or a large amount of that pigment. Or even just if you don't use black within your within your stuff and you're mixing your own blacks, so you gotta use a lot of pigment. Must use pigment. The paint companies will love me, but that's that's the way it is. You gotta use the paint. And of course my paint holbein lasts forever. You know, you don't have to worry about it drying up. It's an awesome paint. I'm gonna be when I get back, they sent me a case of uh, pencils, so we're going to be doing some color pencil within our watercolors. We're going to show you how to do that. 
they just um, just sent me a brand new set the new colors new um, something about them is new so we're gonna see I haven't got them yet because I'm, I'm away from home but when I get back we'll see what they what they sent me this is a sign that goes down and then it gets cut off by another sign And there's a, a cross there and then in the window here there's a like a window on the side here and then you reflect this sign into the window here this sign gets reflected into there this sign down here looks like it's like lighter you have to decide you make it lighter or darker i'm going to make it darker than in the photo because it, that way it'll separate from the from the background so i'm gonna make that one darker you can also put some color in there though if you feel like you need some color put some color in there so i'll put some blue to match my blue sky then down here, we just have a bunch of dark, a little bit of water in there. How much time do we got going here? 7-Eleven? Okay, not too bad. <laughs> Again, I started a little bit later than normal, so we'll probably go over a little bit. Boy, I wonder what that is. It's technology nowadays, boy, boy. Hope it doesn't happen on, well, no, I'm doing Zoom on Saturday. Zoom has been okay for me. Here's a potted plant, some kind of potted thing in the front here. Put that in nice and dark. And see how dark it looks right now? But I know I didn't put enough dark in there because I can tell that's, that's what I wanted to dry to. And if you, if you make it look like what you want it to dry to, it's wrong. If it's the color that you want when it's wet, it's wrong. It's going to dry 20% lighter. So make it 20% darker. Just push it. Push, push, push. You can put some color in this one in this front. It's in the front, so... And see how that gives you a whole different plane and now the stuff behind it i gotta wait now for the middle tones back there if there's any kind of detail because this is in front of that so i'm just gonna leave that alone come over here and go down to oh that's the top of this awning here put some dark things out there just don't know what they are we're just gonna go around this See, I just kind of randomly put little horizontal and vertical lines. It's going to look like some kind of building. I mean, all buildings are vertical and horizontal lines, and a couple times you get a, um, an angle. So just do that. <laughs> Make it easily that way. And there's a, not a nice red up here. I should put that in there, right? It's bright. Now, down here in the background, it kind of goes through the Eiffel Tower. And I'm going to stick with my gray blues. Because I'm, I'm squinting my eye and I notice that um, I'm not getting the look that I have here. So that comes down dark. And again, squint your eye. If you don't see the detail, you don't need to paint it. You just need to do what you see when you squint your eye. And that's when you break down a value pattern. That's what the, the value pattern is for. It breaks it down. Or you do like I'm just doing now. Break it down yourself with your squinting your eyes. This is a bunch of stuff over here. And see how it's starting to glow? This is starting to glow because you're putting the darks in now. And so now the lights are just shining all over the place. The lights that you put in suddenly become light. You know, they, before they were just color, but now they become light because you're putting darks down. Underneath the awnings here. And again, if you don't know what's underneath there, just fake it. Horizontal line, look at boom, horizontal line. You know it's underneath something. And that If you do a horizontal line, it's probably underneath something, right? And it doesn't have to be exactly in the spot. I mean, you can't tell me that you can see what's, you know, when you squint your eye, what's happening over here. So do like this, horizontal, vertical lines, horizontal, vertical lines. And it may look messy, but in the end, as long as it's that value in that area, and then on top of that, I would be putting some opaque colors, like for dots, for lights and stuff, which I'm going to do later. Or you can do, like I said before, you can do it with masking fluid beforehand and put your little dots of color and white before that. Let's see, this is, the street goes back there, it's kind of lit up back here. Squint your eye, David, squint your eye. Let me see what we got going back here. This building's a little bit darker, so I'm just going to go over them with a little dark. Kind of went into my sky, but that's okay. 
if you look at those um, artists, Alvaro Castanet, look at how dark he uses. He uses black, definitely uses black, and it's really dark. A lot of his paintings, and he'll do this whole building, just one big swipe of dark. Here we're going to do a little writing on there. Just a little dotted, like it looks like writing. All right, that's, that side's pretty good and close, except for the detail details, and I'll get that in a second after I get this other side to where I get the darks in here. So this side of darks, I'm going to go in on the top of the buildings of the homes are dark up there in Paris. Yeah, there's little dormers up there. I have a couple of lights on. See how a light is dried now? I mean, before it was like so dark, you know, when you thought you're putting darks in, I was putting the middle tones in. That wasn't dark. This is dark. And now we're putting in some darks. And anything above this is going to be there's the eave again. Remember now I can make the eave look light with the orange. Remember I said I'm going to put orange in the eaves? And now you see it. So now I put the dark windows or the area of the windows. The windows are going to be black on top of that. This is an area of the windows. Not the window itself yet. I'm just going to put in like grays in here. It's a little orange in there too or whatever color. I'm going with blue and orange so I dip into that a lot, which is okay. When that dries, I will put the, the fine stuff in, like the, the detail at like the railing and stuff like that. Not yet. Now I'm just getting the... I always work, break it down to smaller and smaller and smaller as I go along. You work with the large to large areas to small areas. That's the way it goes. You would like, oh, I went right over my sign. I'm going to pull out this... I'm going to put it back in with white. Like I said, some of the lighting I'm going to put back in with white. I'll show you how to float the pigment really well. Here's the little blue signs over here. Might as well get a couple of windows that are blue. Actually, light blue, so let's get in, dip in some light blue. Actually, that's reflecting a little bit so you can see it here. I'll pick it up a little bit so you can see the actual. Okay, now for our cars, our dark cars. So I'm gonna go, now I'm gonna switch from my half inch brush, because I use my half inch brush enough now. Actually, let me one more thing with my half inch brush, the tires of the cars, I'm gonna make it nice and dark, and underneath the car. So tire, 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 and then underneath, just kind of come out here a little bit, just with a nice dark. Now it's wet, and what do you do? You float pigment in there. You never use one color. You always go in with a couple colors. Once you got water down, float that pigment. Put it right in there. Um, Sonia asks, do you have lavender, permanent violet, and purple on your palette? Yes. This is permanent violet. It's a very purple. Um, lavender is over on this opposite side, which is this one over here. That one's lavender. And then you'd asked about permanent violet and lavender. Permanent violet, and that's my purple. And actually, there's another purple on this side, which I have no idea which one that is. It's just a reddish purple. <laughs> Every once in a while, I get a little thing, and somebody will squeeze out a color for me. So, and there's a purple of red there. I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> All right, so now detail. So I switched my brushes from the half inch, and now let's go and do the cars. So I'll do the windshields are going to be dark. The side windows are dark. Windshield, you see parts of the windshield. And then, then you see um, the side of the car can be a little bit darker or you can set, switch the colors on, on a certain cars like this one here. And you do another one, a different value, another one. And maybe one can have the headlight on, like it just parked, just so to make it look kind of different. And then there's always shadows because there's lights up above here. And it looks kind of weird now because there are no actually lights on. There's no like, I don't have a particular round lights, which there are a lot, by, a lot of times. But I'm going to do that later with white paint. This is a little bit too bright here. 
and monitor must be really hot and light because this looks really a lot my painting here is a lot darker than what my monitor is showing me so hopefully you guys have your monitor it's not quite as light as this this is like an orange in here and not a yellow my my, my monitor is showing this is a yellow let's see if you can see see the details hardly any details yet now we're going to details each window each thing and so you look at the picture now and you just get things you paint things side of this building you use your smaller brush you start making things look like what they are that's a window here's a wall there's a little chair down here i'm gonna negative paint so i'm gonna go around and like negative paint the chair itself here and then behind that this there's a table that comes down um, the edge of this how about the edge of the sidewalk I'm just gonna put this like this and make the edge of the sidewalk maybe a little line going like here like the street was wet or something like because all these streets have little worn out areas the grate in the side here maybe a little grate these are details now and why are they dark because you wait that's what we've been waiting for to get the darks in here and that's a good way of putting your details in but dark 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 take my um number eight round and i'm gonna do some people right here there's a couple of people walking here i go with really dark first and i and i plop color into that remember you don't have to put the color in first you can put the color in after you get the water with a lot of darks in there I'll take a really bright red and put the one person that have a bright red on. I know it's Paris. I'm not going to put a beret on them, <laughs> but I should, right? I'm going to a couple other people back here. I'm wondering if you guys are seeing this light or dark. Are you guys seeing this as, um, as light as I am? Because mine looks like it's daytime almost. It's so bright. The monitor must be monitored wrong. Hoping you guys see it a little bit more dark. Got some pretty dark areas in here. But I guess it's all going to be, it doesn't matter because it'll be all be depending on what, what the light is back here compared to what is another thing. So it still will be the same composition of lights and darks. The light is light, dark is dark. That'll still work. I'm going to go in here and get my even darker because see, again, these were my middle tones again. Remember I said I went and put the dark windows in there. So here we go, dark windows. And then I, that's where I just use black. I'm just gonna go use black and this is gonna negative paint these windows because they're up here lit up in the night sky here. And these windows, fast windows. I'm not doing, you know, really tight windows on this thing. Very tight. All right, Lori says that hers looks like a little bit of gold. Okay, yeah, it's, this is kind of like an orangey color. So if your monitor is, um, I don't know if my camera's picking it up like that or if it's my monitor here, but I'm getting some weird colors on my monitor. And this is like an orange in here. I gotta go a little faster. We're running out of time here. What do we got here? Tony, five minutes. Five minutes. We'll start. We may go a little bit longer. A little bit longer than five minutes. I want to show you how to put in the, the lights. Because we start a little bit later than I liked. Next week, we're not going to have, hopefully, that happen. I'm going to check this whole thing out and see why that's been happening. See, I'm putting the railing in, putting in like my darker darks to really get the look of the windows and such. And then there's a 
a little lamp right here. Okay, Tina wants to see how I do the um, the Eiffel Tower. I'm just gonna put a wash on it, but I will show you. I won't stop until I do everything. It may go a little bit longer tonight. Okay, now get some color over on this side because we got more color on that side. So I'm gonna put a couple of little writing over here. And now the Eiffel Tower, because it's so bright right now, I'm just gonna put a wash over it with my big brush or it's my half inch brush. Cause it's just a little bit too bright. I, I, it's not too bright, but I think on the top here, I wanna get it a little bit less. So I'm just putting a damp wash over it. A little light, a little light wash. See my dirty pigment? Just take a little bit of that, put it over it. Now, if you're gonna get rid of some of the lines that you put in, because I put in those lines to make it look like the Eiffel Tower, just put them in afterwards. You know, put them in and, and afterwards, it'll, it'll be fine. And up on top here, um, there's a little bit more of a dark area. I'm just going to tap that a little bit. And here I'm just going to get a little bit more of the iron work here. So we can fix some of the iron work. Writing is always a fun thing to put in there, but I like to put it in as gibberish. Like I don't actually, you never read anything on mine. Uh, you can do it if it's a special place that you want to actually read what that area is. But I kind of like to make it not unreadable just because otherwise people, that's a, it could be part of your center of interest. It'd be okay to center of interest, but if it's over here, then you're going to make that the center of interest. It starts getting too important for the area. Lost my wheels. Yeah, they didn't have dark enough. So going back in there, get some more wheels in there. Okay, now we're going to go in and get the lights. Which is kind of weird because, again, on my monitor, it looks so light. <laughs> it's like, what the heck? I must have it really pumped stuff. Can't wait until I get into my studio and get everything worked out. So uh, this setting up on the go. Okay, here we go with the lights. So now we're gonna go with white. And so you could have, like I said, put mask white in, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take and use white paint. I'm just gonna use white over here. And you can do it in two ways. One is to put water down first. I'm gonna use two brushes. One I put down water, this is pure water. Like here, there's a little light right there. And so I'm gonna put down water. And then my, with my other brush, I'm gonna pick up white my rigger, I'm using my rigger in this one. And then I just do a little droplet in there. And it'll expand until it gets to the outer edge of that wetness. So if you want to have it not stop at that, you know, wet a big area, but little things like that. And make sure you're using titanium white, not Chinese white. Chinese white is too transparent. And then you can also do little dots that are not bled, you know, that are just dot dots. That's fine. And you can go in here and get some light, lit up windows. Side of the pole can be lit up. I just find this easier than if you're putting masking fluid. I mean, it's easy to put masking fluid down, to put masking fluid down, but I kind of like the look of white paint. I kind of like the look of the opaqueness to it because it's not really super bright. So here, there's a light shining in the picture. There's a one right here. And so what I'm gonna do is I wet that whole area right here, just the area when it's going down. And I'm gonna take pure white pigment See, I'm just going to let it bleed in there. I just let it bleed down. And I, I can even help it along a little bit. Like, like the light is on. I can just help it along a little bit. See how it looks like light? It's it's blurry. And that's a good thing. So these ones that I did with a dot, you can also wet them afterwards. And then just, you know, wet it a little bit farther. And that usually, um, then maybe a dot in there again. Or just leave it hard edged. There's some you want hard edged, some are not hard edged. And also you can mix a color with it. Let's say I want to make a little bit of bright purple. You can do that too. And there's little um, highlights on the cars or... 
I find, I mean, again, if you're, if you're getting into a show like TWSA, you can't you do this, but um, I tend to like the look of the white paint better than the masking fluid because the masking fluid doesn't give you a soft edge, but this will give you a soft edge. You can, um, or a hard edge, like, like I said, some of these lights are on that you didn't get before. Look at this, just boom, boom, boom. You got the lights are on automatically. You can do something on here in the Eiffel Tower. So back and forth, you know, you can do some that are soft edge, some that are hard edged. And again, the soft edge one, let's do one over, let's try a big one. So you wet it, I'm gonna wet this whole area right here. It's really nice and big rounded. Take your white paint. I have to clean it out because I just, it's always actually good to have one that's um, a big area of white because one side can be, see I have a double double part here and then I'm just going to let it drop it in there. It's just going to bleed out and it's going to just make this beautiful looking couple of lines here. A little flower pot lit up. Or what you can do is like along the street, I'm sure there's a bunch of lamps that are just like here and they're like in the kind of come back that way and you can put little poles on them that are lit up. Some of these cars can have like a little, they probably have chrome on them so you're going to see a little bit of chrome on the tops of them and the windshield maybe or a, what else let me think let me think let me think I think we're almost done right only two minutes over look at that any questions? Yes, and how to get the dark sky showing through the ironwork. Well now, um, so with the Eiffel Tower now, it is super bright and now, so now I can go back in because I lost all my little lines. So again, it's try to get the right value from the get-go and you won't have to do this what I'm doing because <laughs> I almost made it a little bit too bright. But this part around here is a little bit brighter, but that's okay. I think it'll be okay. And I'll take a picture of this and then put it on, put it on, the, um, on my Facebook page. You can take a look at the actual how it really looks, how dark it really is. Cause I don't know, sure in this video, it really looks so much lighter on my monitor, but that could just be mine. You could be seeing it just perfect. So now I'm gonna go back in here and get the um, iron worker grill, like you can see the, and actually you just paint in the dark that you wanna see through the um, Eiffel Tower. You know, look at, the, look at the picture and just copy what you see there. And so just get the lines to look like what they are you fake a lot of it. I mean, you can't see that far back. So I like to just, excuse me, I like to do X's. Like the, like the little X's here and there. And they're not very contrasty. Don't make it too contrasty. You know, too much contrast will make it come forward too far. This is in the background, so it's not that as important as you think. Now that's wet, and so I can't make a hard edge line there, and I don't have a hair dryer, so. Actually, I kind of like it where it's blurry up there, because it's like going into the back. And um, hopefully you see it in a in a good way, like I see it on my baby. I think we, I think that's. It. I'm gonna do a couple more lights. I love doing these lights. I like to just putting a little water here, here, some lights in there. Take my brush with white in it. Where did I do that again? Oops. Where did I do that? <laughs> Look inside. Where did I wet it? Oh, there I wet it right there. Wet it right there. You can also, like I said, you can take it like this. You can make a, make a big line of that. Oh, I forgot one more thing. I want to do this. And then I, oh, what I like to do on these lights is I like to put the dark back in there too. So this I'm going to wet it because I didn't wet there. So I'm going to wet around it. Just wet around it a little bit. Now I'm going to take um, my rigger brush, where did I go? Here it is in the water. And I'm going to put it and use black and make all the grill work on the, on the, on these lamps that are right above it, right above the white. Because if you put a, a dark against a white, like this one right here, then it, it shows even brighter. So that's the little holder that's holding that lamp up. You know, and then maybe here too, maybe you just put a little lamp or put a lantern around it type of thing. So anytime you put something dark next to a white, you're going to get contrast and you're going to make it look, people look there. And it's going to make the white whiter. Okay, any last questions? Give me some questions and then we'll, we'll end it here. I'll take the tape off and I think we're good here. Am I missing something? I think, 
you know what, I'm going to put a little wash, I don't like how bright, bright this is, so I'm going to take a wash of bluish gray across the front here to get, to get anything to look brighter and make these pots more of the, there we go, direct lighting a little bit more. I want a little bit more direct lighting into the window, showing the window off here. And then that'll be it. Is that dry yet? No. I'll dry that and I'll show that in the picture. Yeah, that's about as far as I can go. Take the tape off and we'll call it another week. Another week. So everybody have a great Thanksgiving next week. Um, have a, a lot of turkey. Turkey and stuffing. Uh, stay away from your relatives. <laughs> uh, go from a distance. And um, I will see you on Wednesday next week, right before Thanksgiving. Possibly. I think for sure, but I'm not quite <laughs> certain yet. Um, it's all, all depends on how much work I get done. So I've got to move all my stuff out of my studio this um, next week. So hopefully I get it all out of there, out of my whole building. i got to get everything moved. So if I do get it all moved on Wednesday, look for a, a paint along. If not, I'll see you the following week after Thanksgiving. I will have a newsletter next week. It's already written, so go look for the newsletter, and it'll be in there if I'm, if I'm gonna have it or not. So here, let me see. Let's go like this. I'm gonna look for any more questions you guys have. Let's move over here. Let me get over to this part. So, uh, another nice week. Thanks again, guys, for dropping by. Um, again, if you if you if you do this um, painting, please show me. I'd love to see it, and um, it's my Facebook page, um, Becker Art. You can go there. I have two Facebook pages. One is my name, David R. Becker, and then there's the other one, which is Becker Art. Um, either one on Facebook, you can drop it on either one. And I tend to put um, most of the stuff on my um, name Facebook page, and I also post a daily painting. But next week will be probably in my studio at home. I'm hoping. And so, like I said, have a thanks happy Thanksgiving. If I don't have it on Wednesday, and if I don't have it on, we'll see you the following week. All right. All right. We'll see you guys later. Bye bye.